Our new segment this morning is called The Early Line. Every Saturday, we're going to bring together a panel of experts to discuss the big news story of the week. And the topic this week, how does the Repo Republican Party come back? To help us answer that question, Steve Ranke is a political columnist for the New York Observer. Leslie Sanchez is a Republican strategist and CNN contributor and the chairman and editor-in-chief of U.S. News and World Report, Mort Zuckerman, who is also publisher of the New York Daily News. Good to have all of you with us in the studio this morning. Uh, Mort, I want to start with you on this question. It seems in some ways that the strategy of the Republican Party as of late has been to say no to President Obama. Is that an effective strategy that could work heading forward? I think they've had one of the least successful strategies of any party in our memory because they've lost dramatically both houses of Congress. They lost the presidency by the, lar the largest vote and Obama's popularity is surging and the support for the Republican Party is declining in part because uh, if there is any symbol of the Republican Party, it was Bobby Jindal, the governor of Louisiana, speaking after President Obama and articulating a philosophy that was so completely discredited under the Bush administration that it's hard to imagine that they think they're going to do anything other than consolidate their support in a very small number of arch conservative districts in the United States. Which, which obviously isn't going to be enough to just simply consolidate Absolutely that support. Not. So, so, Leslie, then, heading forward, there's been a lot of talk, too, about Rush Limbaugh. Is he sort of the new voice of the Republican Party? <laughs> Party and people can go back and forth on this all day, but heading forward as a party, yeah. what is your message going to be? How do you bring that back together and bring more people in? Well, no, I think recovery begins where denial ends. There's no doubt about it. The Republican Party has become increasingly white, evangelical. I mean, if you saw, the base of, of Senator McCain's support came from that constituency. Unless we broaden that in very much the way that the Reagan coalition did, expanded to different things, other ethnic minorities, mm -hmm. other suburbanites, we lost uh, suburbanites and we lost people that had... Uh, a bit of a higher education. We have to bring them back. Mike Steele talked about that, uh, talking about having sort of a hip hop strategy, wanting to go after young uh, Latino and African American voters. Is there really a solid strategy in place, though, to say to these young folks and to minorities, there is a place for you in what's known as the grand old white party to many people? Well, it's not only about race, it's about solutions. It's it's looking at what the real role of government's going to be, but what are, we're not talking about education, we're not talking about health care. Those tend to be issues that more centrist or moderates want to talk about. We're going to have to expand that and have solutions that look like good contrast to the Democrats. Steve, it, all, it sounds all well and good, uh, pointing out what needs to be done. You wrote this week that uh, Republicans are their own worst enemy. So then how do you reverse course and become your own best supporter? Well, Leslie is on to something there. You acknowledge reality. And I am looking at Bobby Jindal this week, the Republicans in Congress, the Republicans on talk radio, on Fox News, the Republicans who are dominating the party and driving the philosophy of their party right now, and they are denying reality. Something profound happened in 2008, something as profound in 2008 as in 1980 when Ronald Reagan was elected. Ronald Reagan was elected by sort of channeling a public mood against government. Government was too big. It was suffocating. Government was the enemy. That drove a conservative revolution in this country. 2008, and it was years in the making, but 2008 was a revolt against the excesses of the Reagan philosophy. And, and the Republicans right now seem to be saying, I didn't hear this so much from Leslie, but I, heard, I hear this from every <laughs> single Republican in the U.S. House of Representatives, are are basically saying we got to click our shoes together three times, repeat our favorite Reagan catchphrase, and poof, we're going to be good again. It's not going to work. The public is looking for people who, who want government to take a leading, active, and aggressive okay, role. I I Republicans aren't even speaking to that. What, what Reagan famously government. said was, government is a part of the problem, not a part of the solution. Right. The American people today say, we think government is part of the solution. It is the philosophy of the previous administration that was part and, of the and, problem. And nothing and better, nothing better symbolized that than Bobby Jindal's statement right. on, Tuesday, on the Tuesday night or whatever it was, when he said, you know, government, people say government solves problems, but those of us who went through Katrina have our doubts. The lesson the American people took from that, however, right. was not that government was the problem, that incompetent government administered by people That's, who don't believe that, government has a role right, right. is the problem. But, you know, there's a, that, I think that's simplifying it. This massive expansion of government is what people fear. They want efficient government. They want government isn't, that's going to make Isn't, it, isn't this and, massive and, expansion right, of government it, republican esque? No, no. I think, I think Six trillion dollars in debt. I think there's fault on either side. I don't think there's mud on both boots. And, I mean. the, and the American people would likely agree that there is probably mud on, on both boots, especially these days. Mort, I want to end with a, a final thought from you because we're talking about Reagan and looking to the past, but the New York Times Sunday Magazine coming out tomorrow actually has a huge cover story, picture of Newt Gingrich. And in this article, they say, is the future of the Republican Party the past in looking at Newt Gingrich? Could he in some way yeah. be a savior for the party? Well, if his ideas were beginning to be adopted by the Republican Party, yes, he's one of the most intelligent and thoughtful per 
uh, people in all of American politics, and he really is trying to fashion a whole set of ideas and principles and politics that address some of the issues that we were talking about before in health care, in education, in the way government uh, uh, is involved in our lives. But nobody's paying that much attention to him, frankly. I think he's a brilliant man, and I think he would be a vastly better leader and would have been a vastly better speaker for the Republican Party had he been the person who followed uh, Barack Obama rather than Bobby Jindal. Bobby Jindal is having a tough time with this one, taking well, a lot of flack for it. We have to leave it there. I'm sorry, but such a pleasure to have you all here, and we look forward to having you back. Ward Zuckerman, Leslie Sanchez, Steve Kornacki, thanks again.